To start making the spatial IO multi-block structure, what you're going to want to do first is clear a small area, depending on how big you want to build the multi-block structure, and the smallest you can build it you, is so that the internal or the inside of the multi-block structure is 3x3, three three, and the largest you can build it is so the inside is 128 by 128. Once you have an area cleared out, you want to place horizontal spatial IO blocks that run front to back in your spatial IO multi-block structure. And then once you have those placed, you want to make sure that there's a one block gap in between each horizontal row. And then you want to place spatial IO multi-block blocks along the edges of the bottom blocks that you've placed, just so I have demonstrated here in the video. Next, you want to determine how high you actually want to make your structure. So to do that, you want to make U-shaped rings of the multi-block structure block, as I have demonstrated here. I just have the one layer. However, you want to make sure that when you do build it, you have a U-shaped ring and then an air block and then a U-shaped ring and then an air block and so on, so on, so on, depending on how high you want to build your structure. Once you've determined the height of your structure, you want to go to the front of it and you'll want to make vertical columns going from the bottom to the top. And then you want to have an air block in between each of those vertical columns as well, just as I have demonstrated right here. All right, you're nearly done. Now you want to add horizontal multi-block blocks on the top of your multi-block structure now, and you want to run them just how you ran the bottom one, so kind of just parallel to them, but on the top instead of the bottom. Last but not least, you just want to hook up all the columns and rows together with ME cable, and then your multi-block structure is complete. All right, if you're still not 100% sure just exactly how to build this multi-block structure, I'll put screenshots at the end of the video just so you can exactly see. I'll have a front view, side view, back view, top view, such and such, just so you can kind of get different angles in a picture type thing, just so it's kind of a bit easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and make it daytime quickly. All right, so what you're going to want to do now is connect this spatial pylon directly to your controller through the spatial I.O. port. So to do that, you can see I have a cable that runs around the back and it goes directly into the controller and it kind of runs around the side of the ME uh, Mac computer and then it comes over here. So you're going to want to make sure that between the multi-block structure and your controller, you have the port, which is right there. And now the moment of truth. If you have successfully completed the multi-block structure and successfully connected all the columns and the horizontal multi-block parts all together with these ME cable here and you connect and you connect it to your system, it should all, moment of truth, there we go. It all turns purple. If, you've, if you successfully have completed it, it will turn purple. Even if so, if I take this one out, or if I take that, that one out, percent, there we go. So now not all of these are connected to each other, so it doesn't work. It still remains red. However, I just, if I just connect them back up, you can see it turns purple, which means the structure has been successfully completed. Okay, so now how do you put things in here? Remember, this thing can hold items, players, entities, blocks, ender dragons, anything you want if you can get an ender dragon in there somehow so why don't we go ahead and let's put in a let's put in some me cable how about so we'll go ahead and do this and we'll just put in a column of me cable so to, to power this or to activate it first you're going to want to see how big your internal structure is so ours is three by three and there's three sizes of cards you can use there is two cubed 16 cubed and 128 cubed so for our purposes, we're going to need a 16 cubed. So you take the card, put it into the spatial IO port, and now we need a sufficient amount of power to actually activate this. So you can see the required power is 80,000 AE. However, we only have just under 10,000 available. Well, how's that possible? We have a creative energy cell attached to our controller that should be giving it more than enough energy. Can we just attach a creative energy cell to this? No, we cannot. So how do we fix this? Well, I believe the only way you can actually give this the correct amount of power is by putting a energy cell energy cell onto it. So I'll just go ahead and I'll just stick one underneath here. And then if I just cover it back up, you can see now, there we go, 210,000 available AE power. So now we have more than enough power we need to successfully run that. So to activate it, all you need to do is get a lever or some sort of a redstone, something that can act as a redstone signal. So we'll just go ahead and plop the lever down, and when we flick this, that cable should disappear. Flick. Excellent. The cable disappeared. If we go into here, we can see, perfect. The ME storage cell, or the storage cell, once it's been activated and stored with items, moves to the right side. So we can pull it out, 
put it back in, reactivate the redstone signal, and boom, comes back. Excellent. So let's go ahead and we'll just, why don't we just try putting a creeper in there, how about? So we can go ahead and let's just get rid of this and let's get a creeper. And right, creeper. Hey, uh, we might be in peaceful mode quickly, so let's just, uh, oh, I haven't done this in ages. Ah, okay, let's go easy mode and we'll just put in some, oh, there we go. <laughs> that scared me. We'll just put in some dirt here just so the creeper can't get out. And we'll just kind of cover it up a bit so the creeper physically can't get out. And then we'll put the creeper down. Oh yeah, so the spaces in between the blocks here, or between the columns and the rows, don't actually have to be air. It just, it just can't be another spatial pylon. So we have a creeper in there. And if we take this and flick the lever, boom, the creeper disappears. So now the creeper is in this kind of... He's in another dimension. He's stuck in another dimension right now. So, a concept for this is we have that creeper. We now have a, oh, okay, that's fine. We now have a creeper on this card. There is a physical creeper in there. So what we can do is we can take that creeper and go make another one of these somewhere and stick the creeper in there and then respawn the creeper. So you can kind of use this as a, as a teleportation device because you can put yourself in here, have it automatically activate, and then have a system where it automatically takes the card out, moves it into an ender chest per se, and then it goes from the ender chest into another ME or a spatial pylon multi box structure where it reactivates it automatically and resummons you. A very good thing to note is, is you can only have one multi box structure per controller. So I can't build another one of these and have more than one on one controller. It just doesn't work. It breaks down and breaks. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll put the card back in as such and we'll respawn the creeper right here. Perfect. It is the same creeper. And to prove it, Let's just hit it a couple times here. So the creeper has about 16 health. And we'll just do this quickly. Flick it and activate. Creeper did. Oops, sorry. I gotta do this first. And creeper disappears. And then we'll put it back in here and reactivate. And there we go. Creeper has 16 health. So it is the exact same creeper. It's just moving it to another dimension. That's all it is doing. So. I think that's where I'm going to end the tutorial here. I'll have the screenshot slide right after this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.